Welcome to another episode of PowerShell Pro Tips. I am Andrew Pla, Microsoft MVP and PowerShell lover for a long time, and I'm here to show you some cool stuff uh, related to PDQ Deploy and Inventory. In particular, we're going to be covering a module called PDQ Stuff. So if you're using PDQ Deploy and Inventory and you want to power it up with some cool PowerShell stuff, this is your video. Now let's just jump right into it. So first thing you're going to want to do, a lot of these commands are going to interact with your database. So in both products, you're going to want to go to Options, Preferences, database, and then you're going to want to click back up now before you make any queries or changes. Just be a little extra safe. You want to do that in inventory and also in deploy right here. Database backup now. Backup successful. Awesome. Let's dive into it. So first of all, shout out to Colby for this awesome module. This is made by Colby Boehm, a longtime webcast listen listeners and viewers uh, may be familiar with his work and have seen him on the webcast. If you run start process, it'll pop up the documentation for his module. Fancy. Uh, there's a good description of all the functions that are available. As you can see, there's a lot. Definitely recommend diving into it um, and seeing what you can learn there. There's helper functions and then there's like primary functions. Primary functions are what you're probably going to primarily use, but helper functions can help if you want to do some more advanced stuff. All right. First thing we need to do, install that module, PDQ stuff. Now, worth noting, there is a dependency on a module called Simply SQL to generate the SQL queries, kind of make it a little bit easier for you, but you just run install module. You can get both of those installed and it looks like, uh, well, I have it already open. That's fine. But on your screen, if you don't have it installed, you shouldn't have that issue. So the first thing you do, we're going to look at comparing PDQ inventory computers. So whenever I worked in solutions, it would be a common request for people to wonder what are the differences between these computers? Say you have one machine that's working really well. We'll refer to that as our reference computer. And you have another computer that you want to make sure that it's looking good. So let's run this right here. And you can see I piped it to out grid view, so it will show you in a grid because there's a lot of applications here. And the arrow indicates arrow to the right, it is on the difference machine, arrow to the left, it is on the reference machine. Um, there's a lot of software here. As you can see, there's some differences in the versioning of 7-zip 2201 and 2408. And there's some other cool stuff here, different versions of deploy. That's because I primarily use the reference machine. I don't really use the other machine too much. You can also look at the parameters, include equal and exclude different. If you want to include the software that they have in common, or if you want to exclude the things that they have that are not in common. But if you use exclude different, you're going to also need to use include equal. You can also query tables. Everything in DNI is in a SQL database, a SQLite database. And there's a table for printers. And we can compare between two machines to see what printers do they not have in common. So it looks like in this instance, D22 Apla Lab has the fax printer, which is like a default thing, and the server doesn't have that set up, which kind of makes sense. But if you had a production environment, you might see a lot of differences there. If you've been using PDQ Deploy for a while, maybe you've looked into the PDQ Deploy deploy command, which allows you to deploy applications. And that works well. You can send it to a bunch of targets or collections or whatever you want. But this adds a nice little parameter, the wait parameter, which will wait to proceed to the next line until the deployment is finished. So let's test that out with 7-zip here. I run it, you can see it's not returning the cursor to the prompt until the deployment is finished. So it's gonna take a second here. It is pretty damn quick, but if you're doing some scripting, oftentimes you would, if you didn't have this, you would have to manually do a do a while loop and wait for the results to come back before you proceed and query the deployment and all kinds of fancy stuff. But this takes care of that for you. And that's a pattern you'll see a lot with this module is it takes a lot of the extra scripting that you'll have to do away from you. So get PDQ deployment will return all their deployments. You can see this most recent one is officially finished. What I love the most about this is your ability to interact with custom variables. So I have a custom variable I created called my package version. Say you have some application in your environment, it's custom to you, you wanna keep track of it and use the best practices of DNI by using variables and creating collections based on those and targeting those with your deployments. So if I get the get PDQ variable from inventory and the name is my package version, you can see that I have a package of 4.3.0. So say there's a new version that gets released, we can update that. Like I was saying earlier, if you were to do this manually, it would take a bit more work. So you can just give it the SQLite query, provide it the database path, and you gotta give it all that. So if you know SQLite, and this may be not too big of a deal for you, but I personally prefer using PowerShell whenever possible. You can see I run the query, it returns 4.3.0, but that is just a string. That is not a rich PowerShell object like you get back with PDQ variable. Now, if I wanted to update it, it's just set PDQ custom variable. We'll make it 4.4.0. You can see it goes through creating the query for us, and it will add that to the database and return the result as you expect with PowerShell. Look at that. Old value 4.3, new value 4.4. Here's more of a, a use case. It's a little bit more practical for you. So 
an application that you may have in your environment that unfortunately installs per user, which can be kind of frustrating at times, is Discord. So I'm going to create a custom variable called app ver custom discord with a value of 0.0.1. .0 and we can use that. And I've actually created some collections around that right here. So I have discord old, discord not installed, and discord latest. So there will be, update the variable, there will be a discord latest. So let's go through what that looks like. First of all, we want to get the old version. And we particularly want the value of that. So we have an old version thing here, 0.0.1. .0 that makes sense. That's what we expected to see. And then from here, what I'm going to do is actually check the latest version of the Discord installer from the discord.com slash API slash download and get the Windows one. So let's see what that looks like. Looks like Discord version. The current one is 0.1.0.9059 and the old one is 0.0.1. So if the new version is not the same as the old version, what we'll do is we will download that, put it in the repository, in the Discord folder, and then we will update the PDQ custom variable with new version. You can see it's creating the file and folder here for us. And then it has updated the value of app for custom discord, which if we look back at these collections, you can see now there's something in the latest. If we dig into this collection a little bit further. We can see application name contains discord application version equals app for custom discord. So this will automatically update any collections that refer to this variable. And that is a best practice way to go about things in this module makes doing that in your environment for non-package library packages a whole lot easier. And from there, say you update the thing and you have some ones on the old, you can start a deployment targeting a collection and send it the Discord package and get yourself going. There's also some cool commands for interacting with packages for air gap networks. So you can use invoke PDQ package download to download a PDQ PKG file that you can then put on a USB stick and transfer to your air gaps network. And one of the cool helper commands that it has is invoke PDQ SQL query, which allows you to generate SQL queries with a lot less code, a lot simpler, just using PowerShell. You can specify the table and other things like that. This has been another episode of PowerShell Pro Tips. We took a look at the PDQ stuff module, how to start leveraging it in your environment for custom variables and all sorts of other things. Check out the PDQ Discord, discord.gg slash PDQ, and give us a like, comment, subscription. Check out the other videos we have to offer here. We've done a whole series of PowerShell Pro Tips, and there's a lot of good stuff there. So thanks for checking us out.